Good afternoon, everybody. It is my privilege to welcome all the esteemed speakers in probably one of the most exciting panel discussions on integrated cybersecurity mesh for a secure, interconnected future. Are we not living in exciting times, right? The networks have become much more complex, distributed, and detecting and responding to these cyber threats has become increasingly difficult. With the current geopolitical scenarios that are playing out, have also highlighted the need for cyber security across various countries, right? And, and the pain of being a cyber security warrior at this point of time has led to cyber security sprawl that complicates the management, talks about visibility, and it also limits the ability of an organization to respond effectively to threats. More and more boards, CEOs, CXOs I talk to are worried about one thing. They don't want to get up early in the morning and see their name in the newspaper because of a cyber breach, right? And unfortunately, that's what has become a single breach. And you're in the front pages of not only a technology paper, but in, in all leading business newspapers. We, we've seen that happening more often than not. But security in silos is not secure. Your security tools must be integrated, share in four or, or else attackers will just simply, you know, slip through the cracks. And, and that's what we've seen happening. Right? Uh, one phrase which I love using is that attackers are probably two to three steps, if not more, ahead, ahead of our thinking. And, and add to this the entire new normal, which I would like to define uh, from a COVID perspective. Uh, talking to a very close uh, CEO friend of mine, and I was telling him, you know, you've got one office, four regional offices, and about 10 sales offices uh, in India. And he said, no, just breathe. Uh, we've got 14,000 offices in India. And I said, what? He said, every employee working from home today is my office. And I don't have an enterprise boundary to protect it. He said, we are more and more living in a uh, borderless world. Uh, so thank you. Uh, uh, you know, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's such a privilege to uh, once again speak with you. Uh, let me start with you, Praveen. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and, you know, uh, what, what did you think when you got an invite to this conference? Thanks, Jaspreet. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, before I introduce myself, I would like to thank the presenters, Tech Plus, for giving me this opportunity to share the dais. Sorry, I think maybe I'll have to call it share the screen with certain eminent cybersecurity leaders of the country. Thanks for the opportunity. I am Praveen, Praveen Kumar, the Chief Information Security Officer of Z Entertainment Enterprise Limited. Uh, in short about my previous roles, I am a veteran of the Indian Navy with 21 years of commissioned service, I recently retired as, the, as a commander. And this is my first uh, corporate stint, I would say. However, I was managing cybersecurity at various roles in the Indian Navy. And this is the first uh, corporate role I am uh, taking up. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a very interesting introduction you gave, Jaspre. Uh, you know, the topic of today that is integrated cybersecurity mesh for a secure interconnected future. There are various parts to it, but I think largely it's been driven by the new normal which we just brought out. I still distinctly remember uh, February, March of 2020, when we first heard of words like lockdown, I'm sure most of us never even, the, the word lockdown never rung any bells back then. Fast forward to 2022, and we are here discussing the new normal. Nobody ever thought that all, this, all the things which have happened, both in terms of business or in terms of cybersecurity, would ever happen. We were not prepared to be very, very frank. I'm not only talking about a specific industry in, uh, uh, in point, but in general. All of us were caught unprepared. Back in those days, BCP, DR were largely, I would say, terms of uh, which we had read. But uh, read plus maybe certain run books, certain drills. But today, that is the reality. All these drills have been really tried and tested in the new normal. Those are the days when cybersecurity for many organizations was an afterthought. Today, we have become the business enablers. With that as a background, I think the way to go is to move away from silos and try to move into a secure, interconnected future, not only within the organization, but amongst the organizations. We need to share info, we need to share intel, we need to have a process or uh, technology in, in, in place where we can share and grow together. 
Over to you, Chandra. Uh, Praveen, excellent thoughts. And, and I, I distinctly remember, you know, being a career consultant in uh, January 2020, uh, we were talking to a very big global uh, captive center of a foreign bank in India. And, and he said, just brief, what if, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, from a business continuity perspective, what if one of the cities in India is not available for a week? And, and you know, after the meeting, we laughed about it saying, you know, uh, India is such a diverse country. What are you saying? One week, a city not available, extremely not possible. We spoke about 2611, spoke about other scenarios and said, you know, every city comes back in three to four days maximum. And then 45 days from then, I still remember the first lockdown, which was for uh, 60 days, right? So, yeah, you're right. You know, business continuity, business resilience, whatever you may call it, has, uh, you know, nobody opened, a, nobody opened a document to see how do I react. And everybody was caught napping, right? I, I have heard stories about, uh, and, and IT, ITS companies actually uh, couriering uh, desktops to people so that uh, you know they, they could start working and then we'll, we'll discuss uh, this uh, as, as we go forward uh, uh, Maya ma'am over to you uh, Hi everybody, thank you Jaspreet um, uh, I've been attending a live conference after I think um, so many months many many months now so it, it's very difficult to uh, start without thinking about the lockdown, how it, how life was earlier and how is it now. Good that all of us have accepted this as normalcy. As though, though many of us have started going to office at least a few days a week, um, it's still not the same. It is still um, far from uh, what it was earlier. Um, uh, along with what Praveen was saying, I would like to add a little bit on the, on the focus around um, the, uh, the importance of cybersecurity, which businesses have started seeing. So earlier, it used to be one discussion, maybe a few minutes of the board's time. But now it is one of the most important thing that the board started discussing. Uh, the kind of reporting and the depth of reporting that they're expecting, the top management and the board is expecting from security teams have increased many calls. And now it is not the last of the agenda items, rather it's the first agenda item now. And all the businesses across the world have started recognizing cyber as one of the top five or top 10 risks that they are posting now. Um, partially because of uh, the, the remote working that's there, it is also because of the importance of technology that people have started realizing now. It was there in the back of the mind for everybody, but it was not really coming to the forefront. Now they know that if technology drops anything, the business drops. So then they realize that, okay, this is, if technology is up and running, without security, is it really running? And with the increase in the number of cyber attacks that we have started seeing earlier because of the pandemic, now again because of the war, uh, everybody, this is actually in the front page of everybody's mind. By the way, I'm Maya, I'm CISO for Crystal. It's uh, the leading research and ratings agency based out of Mumbai. Thank you, ma'am. Excellent points. And... You know, I'd, I'd like to uh, again bring in one or two uh, small perspectives. Uh, 18 years of consulting experience, uh, we had two lives. One was about 14, 15, uh, three, four years ago. We used to go to a board meeting and they, they used to say, you know, cybersecurity is there on the agenda. Uh, last 10 minutes, uh, we will discuss it, right? And sometimes the board meetings used to get over and they would say, you know, why don't you just send us your slides, etc. Is there a big... Is. And, and no is matter how much, the okay, we will read it. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, even if there was a big risk, it was not big enough risk, according to them. And now, I think probably touch wood, uh, we are the first ones to initiate that board meeting. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure everybody would have heard it that cybersecurity is no longer an IT or a server room agenda. It's actually a boardroom agenda to the fact that companies are now drawing three year, five year product roadmaps or plans and making sure that cyber is an integral uh, uh, integral piece to it. So uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, reinforcing that, uh, Maya. Chandan, over to you. Your initial thoughts, please. Thanks, Jaspreet. So quickly, let me start with uh, my introduction. My name is Chandan. I head the information security function for Mindtree. So I'm the CISO responsible for cybersecurity risk management and the data production piece for Mindtree. Now, 
coming to today's discussion integrated cyber security mess for a uh, secure interconnected future now i think all of you uh, touched upon the word called new normal i would say new normal is going to be never normal so we are not going to go back what we used to be there earlier two years ago two and a half years ago and that is something which is going to be the new normal for us and this is going to be a trend with all the technological changes with all the adoption of digitization digitalization cloud other aspects uh, the life is not going to be same ever before or ever right now coming back to the interconnected piece now before that let me figure out or, or let me kind of throw some light what exactly is going wrong now see cyber security industry is growing probably 20 30% every year with new technology new solutions everything is coming up new and every time we come back and take you know this is the best thing that we have in this world but if you look at it in a different way things are not working somewhere and that's why every year we are getting something new right with best of the solutions can somebody vouch and say that ki, okay now i am 100% secure i really doubt now why there is a significant threat which is coming from handful of people against a matured industry the industry is matured in last 30 years 40 years probably right just with you are there in the industry for almost 20 years now you know how the cyber security industry has grown up right but we still have that fear factor from couple of folks probably those who are not even experienced i'm not sure five years 10 years right so so there is a gap the way they think that is not the same way we think right when it comes to corporate corporates are completely different right we boast about cyber security information security culture risk management aspect programs there are so many things right ming is so i also practice all that but what about attackers do they think in the similar way probably no right now they don't think in silos right but when it comes to us we divide technology we divide practice we divide coes we say this is risk management that is cyber security this is ids ips this is firewall that is network this is perimeter and we don't understand together the picture what is failing what is working what is not but whereas the guy who is there right opposite to you and trying to break you he knows in and out of you he understand all the technologies together he understand the basic probably you might not know what firewall you are using or what ids ips are using or what ids system you are using but he understands how to look at a tcp packet he understands the 30 years old technology better than any one of us and hmm. that is something which they get the edge right so that silos needs to be killed that silos is something which is creating the entire problem there are so many solutions we have right but we are still uh, up against handful of hackers the approach that we take is more architectural by nature than the holistic approach right now centralized products we we all like centralized products but when the pandemic happened we realize oh this is not going to work anymore because your perimeter is fragmented right as you rightly said earlier 14000 odd offices right somebody can say i have 15000 odd offices right now all these are fragmented your assets are fragmented it is across the globe all over the world right so your centralized products are somewhere bottleneck for you right we need to have more integrated products when i say integrated products they need to work independently right they need to work on the edge they need to have their decision making at the edge not at a central location sure. now there are too many problems around point products should i pick this should i pick that there are so many things are there to manage the entire ecosystem so my summation we need integrated cyber security we need something which is more cohesive which is more integrated to each other rather than talking to a central solution the hub and spoke is probably something old now each of the solution they should talk to each other first rather than talking to a central solution so these are a few things probably we need to look at from a future point of view to have a integrated and secured cyber security now, i think some very excellent points chandan and just to reflect back you mentioned about uh, looking at holistic things looking at architecture i don't know how many people would also understand uh, if if show them a proper security architecture what would that uh, look like or or give inputs to that yeah and then you also spoke about i, I think one of the best points uh, that i loved was the person who is sitting outside who is trying to get in 
is not looking at you fragmented saying this is it this is enterprise risk management this is cyber security or this is my legal team which looks at privacy right he would he would look at you with only one objective whereas here we are dividing that objective into seven people and if you i'm sure you're a, you're a veteran right you've, you've seen so many cyber attacks happening globally most of them are because there are slippages between where does it's role finish where does cyber role start where does is role starts and different functions within the organization or uh, you know third, some third party having access to your system which was a shadow it running which a cio or a cto was running and uh, ciso's were uh, not even not even aware of uh, what's happening and to add to this you know the entire digital first model the speed to market right is Uh, all of this is just compounding problems because this is gaining business visibility and and, and as as uh, my mom rightly said you know cyber is now the business if you if you miss out then there are chances that you will be out of business thank you so much and we will come back to that murtaza your opening comments please yeah i think it's a very interesting discussions right we've seen three point of view and i think all of them are right on the dot you know what is required to do uh, in the current scheme of things that or in the current state we are in right uh, we have gone from central infrastructure to a distributed infrastructure you know which is in point is a perimeter itself nowadays right so multiplication of security uh, tool set has happened because of the new normal that we are in right a uh, very interesting fact you spoke about the board meeting right last board meeting when i presented a road map for uh, a bank they said you know how much time you will take to implement i said it will take two quarters and they got very upset and they told me you know we don't have time more than a month to do the entire six months work in security so that that agenda in the board is is far more serious right and Uh, architectural piece is uh, interconnection is everyone wants to share contacts everyone to do collect data into some place and do analytics right and this interconnection will help us to this sharing of information will help us to you know uh, address my rightly agar you know of the infrastructure we have to be successful in blocking them or in keeping them outside our organization thousand times so our our hit ratio is 100% and their hit ratio is only 1% to be successful so it's a real time live job that we are in perfect uh, uh, so just to introduce myself i am murtaza i am the director sales for cyber security business in entity it's been 31 years in the industry and almost 21 plus years in cyber security super uh, i have Uh, and and thanks you know i'll i'll probably address two or three points uh, the board meeting fun where they said uh, two months uh, i have seen both type of board meetings uh, one which said two months i thought this will take one year and the other uh, type of board meeting which says can we do it in a week and 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 you know uh, so uh, there's a video urgency which is, is very, there urgency is very much there every there now yeah, yeah with the time yes the urgency is increasing but you know uh, and and chandan mentioned this uh, mathur sir you mentioned this on the entire interconnected piece uh, i i saw a video somewhere uh, which was how will life look like in 2030 right and 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 i i, I get very scared when i talk about this example uh, but 30 seconds on that you know uh, so i'm sleeping i have a meeting at 8 o'clock in the morning i've set my alarm for 5 o'clock in the morning uh, the meeting i get an email uh, notification midnight the meetings moved from 8 to 10 automatically my alarm clock adjusts itself to change from 5 to 7 which in turn informs you know my geezer which in turn informs my car which in turn informs the gas station saying you know instead of coming in at 7:30 he'll come in at uh, 8:30 or 9 for gas refueling now now imagine uh, both of you spoke about interconnected devices one small breach and and we we just we just gone for a toss uh, with that michael your initial comments please thanks thanks just preet uh, so looking at uh, in today's world uh, i would say that no uh, uh, till 2019 i think uh, 
people were looking at challenges in a structured manner or no they had better visibility you know in terms of uh, it strategy cyber security strategy etc i think 2019 end of the book introduction of covid has thrown all of that into a completely different paradigm and i would say along with covid and look at currently what's happening due to this political situation between uh, russia and uh, ukraine and how hackers have aligned themselves behind ukraine some of them aligning behind russia and you no know, trying to do things i think in today's world now with this challenges you no know, and what uh, we need to expect in the future this ukraine russia crisis could be something which we need to you no know, take it very seriously from our perspective not because of russia ukraine but in the eventuality of something like that happens in our you no know, uh with our, one of our neighbors what we could uh, expect and what we need to anticipate and how uh, what should be the business continuity planning etc so i would say that in today's world you need a out of the box thinking from a complete it perspective and uh, obviously from a cyber security it becomes way more important because there is no more boundaries but no like everybody has talked about it there is no perimeters data is everywhere no users are everywhere etc so uh now uh, i would say that you no know, uh, adopting uh, technologies whether it is for uh, business continuity business enablement securing them people needs to look at you no know, some of the frameworks what we talked about and what we are going to talk about uh, but end of the day we have to look at a connected uh, you no know, internet where data could be everywhere users could be everywhere and the security framework or it framework what one should be setting should be scalable should be able to react to this out of the box way things could go wrong or you know how it can accommodate how it could change and transform to the new requirements with that let me introduce myself i am michael uh, uh, i am a part of fortinet where i drive the pre sales uh, team uh, i had been with fortinet for last 17 years and overall in the security space for more than 20 years and uh, overall it experience of more than 26 years over to you just pretty thank you michael uh, and and uh, you know michael since you said uh, uh, everybody is facing problems today whether it is the war or whether it is the digitization so i would then probably start with you uh, back and and michael uh, given that transformation is such a big agenda on everybody's minds what would be your advice to organizations who want to undertake this transformation journey looking at today's challenges yeah so the bottom line like uh, some of the uh, panelists were saying uh, you need only one person he trade to get into a network visa we you know somebody who is building that shield or the security framework needs to be 100% accurate all the time now when we are looking at a security framework also or like chatan was saying when you are deploying security products you can't be looking at deploying security products in silos anymore because end of the day in it organizations we have security team we have network team we have applications team we have uh, various teams and you no know, sometimes this collaboration becomes a challenge you know etc but when it comes to the hackers they don't think in silos so from a organization perspective we need to move away from working in silos and we need to be collaborative where the security framework what we are talking about it has to be integrated in such a man- manner that you need to have uh, complete visibility of what is happening across your network which is not your data center anymore which is not your corporate network anymore it has to be at the user level it has to be at the wherever the data is residing and based on that user visibility what you are able to get you need to have you need to look at how you can have a centralized uh, maybe single dashboard from where you can enforce your security compliance policies and then how fast you can react to a incident uh, once once it is detected and how fast you can uh, you know resolve it uh, with the minimal uh, damage happening to your network so sure. one needs to look at a framework from all these angles is what i would say perfect uh, let's let's Sir, get... i would like to add one point yeah. please um so when you look at transformation it's absolutely essential that we have the business alignment a lot of technology and security transformation agendas fail or do not meet the the desired success levels because we are not aligning with the business right from the beginning and today i would say this is the best opportunity that we have because our voices are heard much louder than it used to be before so whenever we are embarking on any transformation journey 
have the business guys on your side rather than on the other side questioning why. It, make it a point that you know sometimes it comes from the business saying that we want to be more secure because our customers are demanding us to be more secure. Then you can say that, okay, if you want us to secure you more, we are here to help you. So if you pitch it that way, budgets won't be an issue, approvals won't be an issue, but it's absolutely essential that we tell them what exactly we are doing. We get too uh, tied up with the technical details and we are sometimes overwhelmed by technology because I've been working in that area since many years. So rightfully so, we get a little overwhelmed there. But if you are able to articulate the benefits in the business language and tell them what exactly you are getting when we do this, then I think uh, getting the support from them becomes easy and the success of the transformation also becomes much more predictable. No, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, it, it's a very, it's a very uh, thin line of balance that uh, we as security professionals have to follow, right? We have to uh, understand technology completely. Uh, like Chandan said, the entire architecture piece, technology piece, but we also have to understand business. I was, I was recently speaking in a PVC uh, conference, right? And they were talking about investing, taking over companies, etc. Till the time I was talking about cyber, 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 uh, you know, uh, they were like, okay, one more person coming, preaching cyber is important, etc. And when I told them that because of a cyber breach, their valuation of the company that they're trying to buy will be in a problem and could also land them in a legal soup. That is when suddenly everybody stood up and said, oh, so, oh is it? Wow. <laughs> what legal aspects are we talking about? So, so, Excellent, excellent point on, you know, how do we marry the business and the technology priorities so that uh, so that both are in uh, complete symbiotic relationship, if I were to put it. Michael, you mentioned the point about uh, ransomware and putting threat detection. How do you safeguard yourself or what is the minimum damage you could afford to? So let me come to you, Chandan, right? Uh, you know, despite the best security measures, right? Uh, there is a very high probability that every organization will have a breach at, at some point of time. What do you think are, or what would you suggest to your fellow CISOs on a cyber resilient strategy? And, and uh, what are the tips so that, you know, they recover quickly from these incidents and, you know, with minimum, uh, you know, with minimum possible damage. Okay. So just with, I would say very interesting question because the, the entire focus is always either on the preparedness to stop the ransomware or it is always there to ensure that he, they're not uh, getting tricked by one of them, right? But unfortunately, these are not enough. Now, I would say in this way, you prepare for prevention, but also prepare for the worst, right? If something goes wrong, God forbid something happens, right? Do you have a playbook to respond? Do you even understand where to start, with whom to start? Who is going to take the lead, right? Obviously, your CEO is not going to drive it. If your CEO is going to drive it, then the plan is not there, right? Whether the CISO is going to take the lead, whether there's a committee to look at certain things, right? So the first and foremost requirement is to have a response plan, right? The right set of response requirements to be there in the place. The overall integrated plan is required. When I say overall integrated, what goes into that particular playbook, right? One, first and foremost, you need some kind of technical partners to understand whether you are really breached or not, right? To assess how much is bad or, or what exactly has gone wrong, right? That assessment has to happen. Now, now, once that is there in place, once you know good, bad, ugly, then you would need some help to recover, right? See, earlier, recovery was fairly easy. But now if you look at the size of the organization's failing, right? Let's say you need to image 60,000 or 70,000 odd endpoints. In all practical scenario, it is not possible. You need partners, right? And if you start searching, scouting for partners at that point, it is you're going to gone. be tough. You're right? gone. Yeah, you're gone. So, you're so dead. you need to have partners, not only for your investigation, you need partners to look at your capacity building also, right? You need endpoints, you need desktop, you need laptops. So you need to have a recovery plan for your, or resilient resiliency plan for your forensic investigation. You need plan for your capacity building, you need plan for your BCPs, data backups, right? These are all BAU technical aspects, but what else you need? 
you need good legal support right because when something goes wrong there are tons of regulations that we need to comply with there are customer contracts there are privacy requirements data protection requirements there are different state specific requirements there are many requirements right and we need to communicate within certain time period also so we need not one probably many law firms to support because certain countries have their own way of dealing with this kind of incident what is legal what is not legal right i would say quote unquote uh, probably divide the geography whichever geography companies are working look at your concentration and plan the support in those particular geographies that is that is to deal with your legal and the regulatory aspect of it after that if something goes wrong then it is nowadays a fashion to negotiate right now you need a negotiation partner also and also you need to understand is the payment is going to be legal or not because if you ask me in within indian jurisdiction fema is something which is we need to be careful of because as per fema we are not supposed to pay in foreign currency to any other country in such certain context right so it is not that easy now the next very important piece is the communication bit how much you want to communicate to whom you want to communicate to board to stakeholders to investors to public to media because today media is all over and they know better than your ceo probably and how to media manage it right because end of the day all of us we work for our stock price if media is not managed then we know how the stock price is going to play and probably that hits board that hits ceo that hits cfo that hits everybody right so Excellent. what kind of communication yeah and 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 just to come in here i actually saw one a uh, telecom operator based out of uh, europe uh, their stock prices fell 14% absolutely uh, their cfo had to unfortunately commit suicide uh, just because of a cyber breach and and that's, and that's the uh, that's that, the impact that's that we're talking point. about yeah and finally once you have the plan practice <laughs> it because without practice that's not going to work right which function what kind of role they need to play in what scenario that is very important we yeah. need to practice practice and practice and finally pray that we never use this in real time scenario that would be my two cents for cyber response just to i'll just like to add yeah pravin please go ahead yeah just to, i mean i mean chandan really, really brought out the right points about how to how to you know build resilience in terms of partnerships i i would just like to take one step uh, you know one step back and look at what resilience is resilience is another term which is really taken front stage in the last couple of years thanks to pandemic but if you look at look around ourselves nowhere is resilience on a better display than in the nature trees are designed to bend but not to break our body is designed to self heal and so on and so forth nature is inherently designed for resilience similarly i want to talk about re- resilience by design if you talk about system architecture let it be you know any other system or a cyber security architecture uh until maybe late 90s uh, late 1980s 1990s we were building systems to be failure proof then ir- ironically everybody felt that it is not possible to build a system which is failure proof then they started talking about something called as fail safe or fail over and that's where resilience is that's where we have to build systems which obviously i don't say that we need we need not build controls but we have to accept that there is one point of breaking where the system would fail and how do we continue to remain relevant how does the business continue even after a failure that's where i think designing resilience comes to and i think i mean controls are good to have partnerships are must but wherever we get a chance i i say a chance because you know not every time do we have a say in the architecture many times you have system which are already you know there we just have to operate those system but wherever we get a chance to design a system i think building resilience in design is 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 one thought which each of us should take forward so what do you just be no excellent points praveen i think uh, nowhere uh, in in our history of evolution has resilience been such a keyword than like you mentioned uh, now especially uh if i talk about cyber with the with the or or let's talk about digital with the kind of new technologies ai ml blockchain evolving almost defy nfts almost on a um, I, i would say 
biannually basis right you're, you're seeing new technologies come in and you have to integrate them uh, uh, i was asked by um, a moderator in a session like this on how many versions of android are there right because you are enabling people are working from home and i said maybe like 100 or different android operating system and he told me there are more than 10000 operating systems of android right so uh, i totally envy the uh, uh, job of a ciso where he has to enable all of this uh, make it secure but but uh, you know maya mentioned a point around uh, digital transformation and praveen uh, just quick one minute your bite on that uh, what do we do about the skill shortage that that the industry is going through right and that, if if i add the digital piece to it uh, you know we we just we just looking at a black hole i just i just wanted to add a point here uh, the street but thanks you brought it back uh, we would we, we generally whenever we talk of cyber security i i largely look at it from three pillars i call it ppt people process and tools and technology right we uh, more often than not we are we want to be current with technology we want to buy the latest we want to uh you know hire the i mean bring in the latest technology as you said ai ml based technologies is the jargon nowadays from the process process point of view yes we want to be current we want to be compliant we want to do everything possible to have the processes and procedures in place but once it comes to the skill gap once it comes to the people there are two things firstly the people who are the cyber security folks and the second is the other employees these two are equally important and more often than not we tend to concentrate on the cyber security hiring and not much on the awareness coming to the first point of cyber security hiring today cyber security folks are largely dependent on tools i'm making a statement here i don't know how many of us here agree to that we are largely tool dependent whenever you come across a resume people talk about the number of tools they have worked on but i think we are missing the most important thing that is the first principle where these tools will built from they were built from first principles even if you look back two years back once the pandemic hit us there were no readily available tools to address that problem somebody rightly brought it out but largely we were we could manage the show reason being we were linked to the first principles we know the basics of networking how can we scale up the existing system right. how can we make make our existing systems uh, expand to 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 make the business uh, you know to ensure that business is not affected no tools help us there so i think the 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 dependence on tools i would not say dependence on tools i would say unless we are connected to the first principle we would not be able to leverage the tools the way we are supposed to leverage tools that's my super view excellent excellent point and and what is that so we we gone all 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 across right uh, i think i have two questions for you one is uh, given that you are such a veteran in the industry what advice would you give uh, companies from a new normal and and what do you think will be the changes in their cyber security across strategies across the globe so that's that's my first question and second we have a audience question if you would like to pick it up uh, that would be great yeah okay so so as far as the changes what we are talking you know as ict services provider across the globe is to uh, security cyber security taking an active role in the digitization and the transformation wave that is going on because of this new normal right people are transforming means they are transforming the way they are doing the business and not only the way they are doing the business also the underlying technologies that they are using to do this business right so when we are transforming the way we are doing the business uh, uh, the technology can associate with this new way quite easily if we have this thought process as like what maya ma'am said right thought process about security in the beginning in the right first discussion itself right it also helps us to you know control the entire cyber security which is an element which people uh, overlook because of the overwhelming requirement of security and impact on security but it is you know everyone has a fixed pocket to spend on cyber security and the alignment of business versus spend 
uh, also helps us. So shifting security towards the left is, is the advice that we are giving. So being the, bring the thought process right in the beginning. What we, what we are talking with our clients across the globe is an approach which is called as secure by design, right? So whatever you design, whatever you change, whatever you transform, think with an angle of security. Put, put security in your business processes itself so that you did less and less overhead or, you know, surrounding security to secure that business, right? Process, I'm saying. So put, put security inside the process, move security to the left, have a zero trust mindset, uh, bundle, uh, uh, don't differentiate between internal and external connectivities or connections. Uh, zero trust mindset will help you you know, check everything which is going on on infrastructure, focus on observability and visibility because 80% of the time to resolve is taken in identifying the problem and 20% of the time is taken to resolve because once you know where the problem is, resolving becomes a little less challenging that way, right? Identifying, you know, you take all the large hacks, they, they were large because they were identified uh, after a very long period right. of time, right? right? So that is what we are talking, we are, we are discussing, we are refreshing the new architectures with it and stuff like that. And the second question that I see on the, on the chat is that whether you go for a specialized tool or a platform driven tool, security is as good as how you are managing it today. So uh, rather than having the bells and visual, whistles on new age technologies and silos, security tool set, which does point resolution in your security issues, we would always uh, should have a platform approach because that will help you uh, uh, do the management of security more better, right? You have to, the CISOs have to wake up every morning and see a dashboard that how I am good at the security. It, it, it is an ask of a real-time dashboard. Right. So if manageability becomes easier by using silos tools or consolidation of security or uh, secure the edge concept that uh, we use, right? Uh, it helps you uh, manage it properly. It helps you manage it easily. It reduces the operation hour. It reduces the skill required to operate and manage right. the entire uh, cyber security. It's, it's not the game of deploying security the game is running security Excellent. so how do you run security every day that's that's where uh, the entire crux is people can buy technologies and put but if they are not managed it is like an open door properly right so no no absolutely so excellent to... point around you know managing versus implementing versus running it forever or yes. or running it optimally is is going to be very very important uh my uh, you know, uh, I think uh, since you emphasized on digital, I, I, I would have to ask you this question, right? You know, uh, do you think the emerging technologies like AI, ML would act as an enabler to cyber or, or are they just added areas of headache uh, from a CISO's perspective? And if yes, then how can the organization use such technologies to strengthen the cybersecurity posture and actually use it for your competitive advantage? Absolutely, Jasper. I think um, this is one area which is not being explored too much, mainly because of the lack of skill sets available. Because one point that you touched upon on the skill um, crunch, that's across. So the only way in which we can address it, address it even partially is by utilizing those AI ML kind of skills in looking at, say, say for example, you know, Hundreds of thousands of lines of alerts that keep coming in from SIEM or, or Fireball or any of those long intensive tools. Unless we put some of those technologies in place, we will end up investing or trying to find people to look at these logs and make some sense out of it. There are, of course, engines available to do it partially, but we know that we are still far from reaching a stage where you know, we can only look at those curated events which necessarily needs a human eye. Today, we end up looking at a lot of things that don't really need a human eye. A machine can take a decision and move on. But we are still depending a lot on people because we don't have the right skill set combinations. 
I think if um, you know, as a community we are able to do something on this, uh, it will be a great help to the industry because that's one area where we haven't even touched the, the surface of it. That's marrying AI ML with cybersecurity. Here, the analysis is not on static data. It is on data that is flowing. And you don't have to take a slice of it and do it. You have to do that continuously, only when you're there. Otherwise, when you wake up, you look at the dashboard, you will see more reds than there were you know, when you slept last night. So that's not a good thing. So it is definitely an area that needs a lot of pickup. Um, and I think, you know, after a certain age, we will also think that, no, we can't do this. We're too old, so the, the new guys will do it. I think, no, we will have to pick this up. All of us together will have to pick this up. Maybe we will have to develop some skill sets that we didn't have so far. Invest a little bit more time in it. Encourage existing security professionals to get trained on the other area. It can be the other way around also. I don't I don't think that's an issue because when you need two core skills and both are very intense skills, getting people with both the skills becomes an issue, but I think it is um, doable. There will be a lot of efforts initially, but it will pay back big time. Sure. Uh, just, to add, yes. just to add what my mom said, right? Uh, globally, we see what people are preferring to do is more and more automation in response, right? So... Uh, use AI ML to detect, which will reduce the 80% of the time and to reduce the 20% of the time, use automation playbooks, like what Chandan said, right? You have to have a playbook in response. And can we automate those playbooks so that the reaction time also reduces to a maximum thing? So uh, we need to, we need to, as you rightly said, we need to collaborate collectively and see how we can bring those automation in picture, share those automation among uh, peers in the industry to bring up the reaction much more faster when the incident happens. Just right. add Michael. some more points on the digital yeah. transformation piece. Um, uh, when you look at the digital transformation, you know one of the classic problems all the CISOs were facing were the legacy systems. We didn't know how to upgrade because if, it, if you upgrade it, the application will not come up. Uh, or something else will break. And sometimes we don't know if it will work. It may be it will work, but we are not very sure. So we don't have to, we cannot take chance of upgrading some of the middleware, some of the operating systems, some of the database versions. So we are kind of, you know, we take the risk and live with those old ones. So as a part of the digital transformation, one of the first things that we should pick up is at least understand where there are items sitting, which we don't even know what is going to be the impact and start a transformation of that, a lot of headache will go away when you are in newer systems and you can have a consistent protection. Otherwise, you protect everything, but there is one huge system which is sitting somewhere which is unprotected and we really don't have you know, an exception approval is a bad idea, by the way. Super. It will help to you know um, protect it from an auditor, but not from a hacker. Not from a hacker. Just wait, if I can add something on the AML piece. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look at the... AIML piece contribution to cybersecurity, right? Now let, let's look at some of the behaviors that we typically see. I think Michael Murtaja, uh, they will also uh, agree with me. If you just connect a firewall to internet without doing anything, right? Immediately you'd see some 20, 30% of traffic people are trying to scan. So, so the traffic are automatically targeted toward, towards a public IP by autonomous systems, which are running 24 by 7, 365 days, right? You don't have to do anything. You just connect and switch on the firewall. Rest is going to be taken care of automatically, right? So, and probably another example, we all know that API keys are the crux of the entire cloud subscription, right? If you have API key and you just copy it to any open GitHub or any, any drive, it takes less than 20 seconds for some hackers to pick it, right? So it is not human versus technology. It is technology versus technology. There are 24 by seven AI ML enabled systems are running across the globe to pick, to scan, to sweep what exactly is going on, right? Now, unless we are prepared, it is going to be very difficult. See, human brain is not designed to process so much of data. There's a fatigue, right? And also there is a digital division yeah. between people. The way you can understand certain things, the yeah. way Michael can understand. So we all are different, right? We interpret different things in different way, right? And the automation is always based on certain assumption, right? Your automation, your AI ML, see whether we agree, we don't agree. All this uh, automation ML, they are based on past behavior, right? 
now probably some fine tune some some kind of adjustment on on predictive analysis part or some kind of prediction looking at some past data but historically if you see all the attacks most of the times everything changes right and you said okay this is a new ttp it was not there earlier right you can go back and see you know my ai system failed my ml system failed right you look at the current ukraine and the russia escalation right almost all top notch agencies of us they are under threat right i'm sure they have enough aml protection for them right. but still they are under threat under threat right yeah. so it is not ai ml it is not people it is system against system how good are your systems how good they are trained who is actually guarding it the another question going back to the the skilling part so the problem is i think uh, if you look at one armed force there are different columns to do different things it is not that one team does everything right you have internal security you have external security you have paramilitary forces you have military forces in military you also have different columns to do different works because they right. understand the landscape better but when it comes to cyber security one man does everything it is yes. like always on work from everywhere whether it is appsec or whether it is risk assessment you do the same job right yeah. you are from consulting industry you know right so we use the same resource for everything right iso 27000 becomes our default checklist to analyze cloud to analyze an application to a system to ransomware attack also i was ransomware attack also yeah i have, I have, I have, I have calls from clients saying i uh, you know i am iso 27001 certified will Absolutely. i get a ransomware attack correct so am so, i one so day See, there is a fundamental issue in our understanding yeah right there is a fundamental issue in our understanding see you can't take one <clears throat> let's say uh, soldier and ask him to fly a mig right the, the trainings are not enough right that there, there are so many things somebody has to learn right right Great and point, and, there, and there are different worlds are there so today we are talking about i'm sure uh, the panel here you would agree that people are talking about metaverse security blockchain security and we are still struggling with iso 27001 compliance so these two are like Final day is uh, years different. Okay. Right. Yeah, so so let's like, just to add, to add far beyond yeah. firewalls and IPS. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So just, what just to add here. what just to add what Chandan and Maya ma'am just said. Again, going back to the t- uh, title of this discussion, breaking silos. I uh, I really don't think we need to find resources who are AI ML trained today. But what we need to do is to understand the problem, make a use case out of it. and push it up push it through our engineering teams who can build that tool for you i'm saying this out of experience because we recently have been able to build a anti piracy tool based on ai ml through partnership by by in simple words by breaking the silos of security and engineering we have built a tool which has been uh, successfully deployed today and uh, we've been able to detect piracy in real time so we need not uh, try to build the skill set with cyber security i feel but yes we are the ones who understand the uh cyber security landscape well we need to meet, we need to make the use case properly and make the engineering team understand the use case and leave it to them to build the tool for you super one uh, statement i want to make before you move just please is that cyber security also depends on the intelligence what goes in the cyber world what is latest happening and that's a huge amount of data to understand analyze and come up with uh, you know suggestions around it so uh, rather than building all this on prem platform within organization it is always a better idea to leave it to a provider who does that for living so mss is the way that people look into so that the ready made intelligence is available what's happening in one client can ready made pass on to the other yeah, one good point yeah and and chandan and pravin both is, spoke a lot about sharing yes. of information which i think uh probably again can happen or might be happening but in silos right a uh, few friends would be talking to each other but i don't think so there is a industry or a community wide sharing yet uh, that happens openly michael uh, one is an uh, question from uh, the audience uh, from fanish on how to monitor and check how our system is in attack or being attacked if there is a vulnerability in the design process itself and and second what would be your closing remarks to all our viewers listening so when it comes to detecting a vulnerability in a system in a process etc uh, the first and foremost it is never a one time activity it has to be a continuous activity where uh, one needs to have a baseline in terms of what is the security what you have uh, set up and uh, 
like Murtaza, like uh, Chandan was saying, you need to have visibility in terms of what are the trends. You need to have visibility in terms of you know, what are the kind of application access. For example, you know, most of the times when you look at uh, the hacks which is coming, you know, uh, happening and how it's getting compromised, I would say the classic example for, uh, you no, know, I would not go into the deep, but this colonial pipeline, I'm sure uh, everybody would have looked into it uh, for sure or would have read about it. But the bottom line was it was a weak password of a VPN user using which they compromised and then they managed to get into the network. So all what they're looking for is a, a door through which they can access uh, into a network. It can be any user you know, through which they suddenly get into a network and then extract whatever data what they need. So a close monitoring of all the activities, what is happening in terms of users, what they are trying to do, whether like Murtasa was saying, they should be, you know, everybody should be looking at a zero trust uh, you know, a framework whether you no, know, it's internal users, external users, contractors, whatever type of connectivity, wherever your data is residing, look at it from a zero trust framework in terms of you no, know, how to identify the user before authorization, what all checks needs to be done, and then even after authorization to ensure that what is the activity is what is doing, etc. These are all very very important uh, framework. And just to touch upon this AI MI part. Do keep in mind that if we don't adopt AI MI, definitely the bad vectors, they are using AI MI to you know, find out new ways and means of you know, getting into your network. So you know, uh, as long as we don't adapt to the new technologies, we will be always on a back foot. You know? I'm sure everybody understands that this is a cat and mouse game where you know, one has to be one step ahead of the other. Otherwise, you, know, you are always at, at loss. So to conclude, it is, it's, a, it's a continuous journey. And one has to be on the top of the game, whether it's from a technology, whether it's from what is happening in the, uh, in the, in the, in the world in terms of cybersecurity and keep adopting and you know, keep looking at as to know what's the best way to enhance your security and be better equipped to you know, face the attacks. Because as just with what you're saying and everybody would uh, agree to it, it is, it is never a, a scenario where you are 100% protected and you need to be prepared that when it happens to you, how do you react to it? All right. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, I think uh, just want to end on a very small note. Somebody asked me this thing. What's the safest computer in this world? And, you know, I, I don't want to take answers for that uh, because I've got answers from saying human mind to etc, etc. But uh, the answer that I got in and, and the answer that I got in that panel was a computer which is shut down, uh, not connected to the Internet. Uh, it is chained, put in a lockbox and thrown into the ocean. So, so that's the kind of uh, complete security that we're talking about. Uh, thank you so much, uh, esteemed panelists. It, it was a real pleasure uh, moderating uh, uh, this session. I hope the audience had a great time. Thank you so much. Pleasure being with you. Have a great day. Same here. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.